Welcome to Perspective Tutorial, Drawing Thumbnail Perspectives from Photographs. This is an example of ink on vellum. And coming up, this is another example of ink with color pencil on vellum. There are various ways of drawing perspectives. Here we focus on drawing from a photograph, and this is an 8 and a half by 11 print of a site in Colorado on the eastern slopes of the Rockies. So we are going to lay a sheet of vellum, 11 by 17 sheet size, over the photograph. And part of this technique involves tracing from an underlay image. So we'll see what this looks like with the photograph under the vellum. As we're beginning to get the vellum over the photograph, immediately you notice that the contrast of the photograph is not enough to see clearly. So we are going to create a different underlay. And I think before we worry about that second underlay, we'll go ahead and make the border around this page so that we have a frame for the various perspectives we'll be drawing. The title and page frame style that I like allows one half inch margin at the bottom of the page one half inch at the top, three quarters of an inch on the left hand side of the page where in a set of drawings a binding would be, and then at the right side of the page as much space as you need for your own title block, and here we will allow two inches for the title block. To the right of the title block give it a half inch margin to match the top and bottom margins on your page. So here we go, half inch top, half inch bottom, half inch plus two inches gives us two and a half at the right and three quarters of an inch at the left of the page. For now, these will be drawn very lightly in pencil. They will be inked later. Now that we have a frame drawn on the sheet, and being in lightweight pencil, the camera might have a hard time seeing this. Nevertheless, it's time now to take a second look at the underlay. Given that the vellum does not allow us to see the photograph as clearly as I would like on this drawing board, I'm going to pull it out from underneath the vellum lay it on top, and we'll see what happens when we put a sheet of trace over it. Our next strategy is going to use that trace to make an underlay. So as we are looking again at the photograph, and before we put the trace over top, let's take a look at this. Now we also engage brain and think about what is the most important aspect of this to show. I would like to draw the eye of the viewer to the proposed new construction that will take place with this project. So that focuses around the entrance to the house, a walkway that goes along the driveway to the road, and wheelchair turnarounds, and safe loading zones from wheelchair to car. So as I'm looking at this drawing, and I see the tree, the large tree that's at the east side of the driveway. If I wanted to focus on the lawn and the landscaping, I would make sure to show all of that tree and everything beyond it, because it could create an enticing path towards the back of the house. Since that is not my focus here, I'm going to stop the drawing by the trunk of this tree I'm going to let the canopy east of the trunk fade away into the space and be 
not too detailed with what happens to the east of that tree. The second or center section of the house, where the entrance is now, adjacent to the attached garage, is a very important area to draw the viewer's eye towards. That I will show with more detail. So now with a little study, we can pretty easily see that we're going to focus on the part of the photograph showing the house entry with the driveway as it exists now. And so what I have done is to mark off the edges of the drawing using the lead holder and the architect scale. And they more or less frame the area that we will focus on. So to allow the areas outside of our focus to fade away into the background, we simply draw them with less and less detail. All right, so we have our drawing focus, and I think we're ready to lay out some trace and see what happens next. Laying the trace over the photograph, it's very clear to read. The trace is just much lighter weight than the vellum, for example. So now we can use the photograph as an underlay for the trace, and we will lightly pencil in the part of the photograph we are interested in drawing. Very lightweight, using a lead holder with an HB lead with a very sharp point and a very delicate touch, just lightly, quickly hand render over the photograph, catching the outlines of the various things that are most important to show for our upcoming perspective. And here there's a choice. I am lightly freehanding for the first part, covering the foliage that way, for example, for the roof lines of the existing property, which is a ranch house with various interesting additions to it. You could use this small triangle and hardline that. And just a side note here, when you draw with a gentle touch on the trace with a sharp HB lead, if you get the line in the wrong place, you'll note that it's quite successful even on the trace which would tear easily if you ground down with an eraser on it. With a light line it's very easy to erase using your kneaded gum eraser gently stroking along the trace. And again that comes from light touch with the lead sharp point HB lead. Next thing to take note of is that even drawing lightly with pencil, because it could smear, it's good to be methodical. So you'll notice that I am tending to work from the top of the drawing down, from the left of the drawing to the right. And now that I'm on the right working on that tree, once again, I'm freehanding. Once you have the underlay penciled in where you're interested in showing it, you are ready to put your pencil down, pull the underlay out, and see what this looks like. So let's see what happens when we pull out the underlay. Now we have the first underlay that we'll need, I would like to show two perspectives on this 18 inch wide sheet. There will be a small perspective showing the existing house, and then there will be the larger one showing the proposed construction. So this has been the larger of the two underlays that we need. Now we will prepare the smaller. And to do that, I have shrunk this 8.5 by 11 photograph by 50%, and it's going to end up being about the right size 
to do the smaller of the two underlays, which again will be the existing construction. So here we go. Because I know I'm going to use this smaller photograph as a trace underlay, and I'm going to have to maneuver it under a larger piece of trace. I'm trimming it down and leaving a handy tail that I can grab to slide it exactly where I want it to go. This is a useful thing to do with underlays. And this also allows me to see the large and the small photographs side by side, make sure that it's the layout I want before I start drawing. All right, so the camera does pick this up a little bit. You can see that Although you don't see the great detail, we now have an underlay focusing on the part of the photograph I want to render as a perspective. I can now use this trace underlay under the vellum to go ahead and actually draw the perspective. So let's see what happens when it slides under the vellum and we start drawing on the vellum. So now we have the trace underlay under the vellum, and it needs a little bit of fiddling to get the position right. I can use the smaller photograph, which will probably need its own underlay also on trace. I can use it to position where the larger rendering is going to land on the page. So there's a little bit of fiddling around that you do here, but um, you get the underlay positioned as you want it. And then I'm taping down the vellum to the board so that some of this drafting tape catches the trace underlay as well. This will keep everything quite solid. And I've had to check the layout as well with the T-square and triangle to make sure that my horizontal lines are still horizontal. With the trace underlay positioned and the smaller photograph tucked in under the vellum. This looks like a pretty good layout. So it looks like the next step is to go ahead and start drawing on the vellum. And I will do the same thing I did with the trace underlay, which is lightly work it in with a pencil, actually with the HB lead in the holder, sharp point, delicate touch, get the lead on the page so that I can see what it looks like without the underlays. Thus far, this tutorial has focused on a sheet size of 11 by 17 inches. So 11 inches tall, 17 wide. And that is not the only sheet size you can use. If you look at this drawing board, the drawing board itself is about 18 inches by 24 inches. And for those of you that may be drawing at that size, you can use these same two photographs. You have a choice. You can make the photographs a little bit larger and fill an entire sheet with just a slightly larger perspective rendering of both the existing and the proposed construction. You could also keep your renderings at the same size we're showing here right now allow a little extra space on the page and consider using that to put, for example, part of the specifications for the project. So that is a choice that you get to make as the designer creating this layout. Now we return also to the small perspective. This will be the as-built or existing rendering. And so again, we will show the same part of the photograph as we did on the large rendering underlay. So here we have our small photograph, a bit of trace to go on top of it. And we tape the whole thing down. It wouldn't really matter, by the way, if you do this small underlay next put it under the vellum and lightly pencil the whole thing in. If you have done your layout and you know what you're drawing, 
then you could always do both underlays first, or you could do the large underlay, pencil that, remove it, do the second underlay. In this case, I'll go ahead and create the second underlay, and then I will pencil both underlays onto the vellum at the same time. And something we are also going to do for this small perspective is give it a frame. This will help to set it apart from the larger perspective. So it's a compositional element. I will hardline the frame using T-square and triangle lightly in pencil now. And the perspective itself will be a mixture in pencil on this only right now of hardlining and freehand drawing. And there we go. So once it is done, then I'm ready to use this under the vellum, and I'll be able to go ahead and draw on the vellum. So now that this underlay is also finished, we can take a quick look at it, and by pulling it off the board and dropping it onto this white sheet of paper, i.e. the back of the photograph, we give it an inspection, and I'm happy with the line quality. It shows what I want to see. This will give me plenty to work with for developing the final ink drawing. So as with the photograph itself, I'm going to trim it down so I have a handle that will help me position this underlay underneath the vellum. And now I do the layout with both underlays under the vellum, and we're about ready to start pencil on vellum. Once we have both underlays positioned underneath the vellum sheet, there will be another check to make sure that the horizontals are really horizontal, verticals are really vertical. So the T-square and triangle will help you make sure everything is aligned correctly. At this point, you're lining up, for example, the ground line on both of the underlays, making sure those are horizontal, and also double-checking the vellum to make sure that the frame was drawn correctly and the edges of the page are horizontal. And once you have all that done and everything is taped down, you want to go ahead and lay the tape so that it crosses both the vellum and the trace so that everything is secured together and you are ready to start working on the renderings. are actually drawing on vellum or for some of us also the 18 pound translucent board. Because pencil can smear and because ink can blob, it's actually a fairly good idea to rip off a couple of sheets of trace and cover the parts of the drawing that you are not working on. Here for example, it makes sense to cover about half the sheet because I'll be starting with the small perspective. Then I can move the trace, cover that, work on the large perspective. The advantage to this is that you can have a little confidence you're not going to smear the drawing. And when we get to the ink, you are unlikely to smear the ink here in Colorado, but Let's say that you place the pen across the page and it's not dry and you move the T-square. Woof. So keeping the parts of the drawing covered that you're not working on is just The other useful part of covering the paper is when you are 
drawing, to be comfortable, usually you're resting part of your hand and arm on your drawing board. There is oil in your skin, and it's good to keep that away from the paper you're drawing on. So all kinds of techniques here. You could rest your hand on your triangle or on the T-square itself. Or if you do have part of your page covered, you can rest your hand on the trace that's covering the page. So another good use for the trace is definitely keeping the paper clean, but also keeping the oil from your skin off the paper. And now, you get to draw. Honestly, that's the fun part. But by this point, we're working on the final sheet, still with the HB lead in its holder, still with a lovely fine point and a delicate touch. Using T-square and triangle, hard line the things that you want hard lined, which at this point of Using the lead on the page probably includes the frame around the small perspective and very probably also includes the roof line for the existing property. Landscape elements are all freehanded and again as you're working on this you allow the details to be most crisp and clear where you want most to draw the eye of the viewer. So just to say this again, for each of these perspectives, where you are drawing the eye of the beholder, you put in more detail. Where you want people to start losing their attention and not really following the lines anymore, you give them less and less detail. And once you have the pencil all done, you think you've got all the great lines you need, then you're ready to pull the underlays out and see what you've got on your final sheet. Another important observation is that the more relaxed you can be while you're drawing, the better. And it's you can think of it as a whole body sport. If you notice the way my arm and shoulder are moving on the camera, there are times when I'm standing up, times when I'm sitting down, times when I'm leaning on the board, times when I'm not. And those movements support my arm and my hand to stay as relaxed as possible. And the more relaxed I can be when I draw, the better the quality because I then have much more control over the type of line that I make. I also have, if I'm relaxed, the ability <laughs> to kind of do two things at once and think about what I'm drawing as I'm drawing it. That's actually a really important skill to develop. Some people, myself included, find drawing is quite meditative. And it's really cool because you get in your zone where you're flowing with this idea that you are recording on a page. At the same time, your drawing is talking to you and you are talking to it. And it's evolving and growing. So, very cool. Hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Here we are working on the other side of the sheet. 
having finished the first rendering in pencil, on to the second. And it's rather cool watching the image grow on the page. And now I would say it's looking like the second rendering is just about finished as far as the HB lead goes. So this would be a good time to stop and stand back and look at what you've got on the page. It looks to me like it's time to pull the underlays out and think about starting on the ink. showing the small existing construction. And this is all the detail I would put on in pencil. The underlay has been removed. We are looking at pencil on vellum. And I think the camera is a little fuzzy at this distance. So the lines are not as crisp as what I see with my eyes. But you do see as much lead as I have put on the page, or I should say graphite. For me, this is enough. I will have the photograph on the board for reference, but I would start inking here. And if you put too much of the graphite on the board, you won't be able to erase even from the good paper. So in this case, for me, this would be plenty and I will begin inking going forward. Here we see a still of the drawing board that has both of the underlays penciled in and I want to just draw your attention to how I have positioned both on the board. Both of them are pulled away from the edge of the page and you'll notice that for the large underlay I actually drew the existing property, I haven't yet penciled in the new construction. And that is okay for me because I will have a photograph on the board. Once that photograph is there and once I have a couple of my drawings of the proposed construction in front of me, I'll very lightly pencil in the new construction in keeping with this two-point perspective that's already begun. And I can do that very, very quickly. So it's more important for me to have the photograph accurately drawn in the style I'm looking for. I know I can add the new construction. And this way I also know that both drawings, shall we say, match each other for context, for landscaping, for the existing roof lines. So this is my strategy. And you might, if you're just starting out, want to do it a little differently. Some of you may fully develop the new construction rendering in graphite, and that would be fine too. So there we go. Here comes the ink. I am going to start by drawing the border around the page. I will draw the window for the title block. And once that is drawn, then I will stand back and look and then uh, probably go ahead and begin inking the um, starting with the left side of the page at the top, the, the uh, perspectives. And then I will work from top down and left right. And I will go ahead and cover the sheet also for the areas I'm not working on. So you will notice that inking is more slow than pencil. To get a really beautiful consistent line with the pen, you want to experiment on a piece of trace and see how fast or slowly you need to draw your hand along the sheet so that the ink transfers onto the sheet nicely and smoothly 
and consistently. That's just something you learn by doing, by feeling. And I suggest you start on a scrap of trace. And then once you feel like you've got it, then maybe start on a scrap of the good paper. Just cut a little couple inch slice off your roll, test it a little bit, and then dive right in on your final sheet. So this has been the tutorial on doing perspective renderings working with thumbnail perspectives from photographs. And we are now at the point where you've drawn your first line of ink on the page. Bravo. Couple suggestions going forward and some inspiration to get your creative ideas flowing. Suggestion one, always check your pens before you use them. Maybe test them on a scrap paper. Make sure they're not leaking. Blobs can and do happen to anyone, but usually only if your pen is leaking. And a quick test will show you that. Second, couple ideas here. You see that you can combine colored pencil after you do the ink rendering. If you're so inclined, I would make photocopies of your ink rendering, and then you can experiment with color media on the photocopies. You can also, for those of you, I think one or two of us picked up a set of ink brushes in grayscale. The museum in Boulder was rendered outdoors, sitting in the shade on a sunny day in front of the museum, using ink pens, the ink brush pens in shades of gray. And that's another technique you could use. The line drawings here were made in different locations around the country, and they're using, for the most part, ink on vellum. So feel free to experiment and have some fun. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.